Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to go through the Java Tutorials lesson Learning Swing with the NetBeings IDE with the IntelliJ IDEA IDE instead. So for those of you who are new to the Java Tutorials, these are some great resources available for free on docs.oracle.com. Now they have a trail called Learning Swing with the NetBeings IDE that has these one, two, three, four, five different lessons in them. Now these lessons go through how to set up a little Celsius converter where you can enter in the degrees in Celsius in a text field. There's a nice label here. Press the convert button and it'll grab whatever number is in the text field, convert it into a double, convert it into uh, degrees Fahrenheit and then show that result here in this label. So this example is a really great way to get started working with Swing and Java and in this particular lesson getting used to using the NetBeings IDE. Now I want to go through this example using a different IDE, IntelliJ IDEA. This is also a very common IDE. I like using IntelliJ IDEA because it has the same key bindings as used in Android Studio, which is actually based on the IntelliJ platform. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is move on to the first lesson, setting up the Celsius Converter project. So go ahead and open IntelliJ IDEA, click Create New Project, and we're going to try and make this as similar as possible to the NetBeans example so that you can use it as a reference. So in this example, the project is named Celsius Converter Project, and that's what we'll name ours as well. So here's our empty project. The first thing we need to do is add a form. So go ahead and expand your project and you'll see an empty source folder. Right click on that source folder, go new. And if we were going to code this GUI by hand programmatically, we'd say new Java class, which is definitely an option we could do this. However, since we're following this tutorial here, which uses a GUI or a form builder, we're going to instead go new and go down to Swing UI Designer and click GUI Form. For our form name, we're going to follow this example and we're going to call it Celsius Converter GUI. GUI stands for Graphical User Interface. Here, it doesn't really matter what layout manager you choose because we're not really worried about making this particular GUI look pretty. We're just trying to get it running. So I'm going to leave the default grid layout manager. Click, make sure that the create bound class check box is clicked and hit OK. Now what's kind of cool about this is two files are made. One is a Java file and one is a form file. So the form file opens by default and this is where we can drag and drop components from our palette in order to build our graphical user interface. Now this is really where IntelliJ IDEA and NetBeans start to differ because if you look at our Java file it's empty and let's say we go ahead and add a J label onto our form, onto our J panel. Nothing's added to our code. But if you look at the example in NetBeans you get a lot of boilerplate code here given to you by default. Now, if you look even more closely, this code gives you a class, Celsius Converter GUI, that inherits from JFrame. Now, in our example, we have a JPanel. We don't have a JFrame. So we are going to have to write some code in order to set up a JFrame. We'll get to that here shortly. So I'm just letting you know that because of differences in the IDE and the form builders and the GUI builders, uh, we are going to be diverging a little bit here, not by choice, but because we have to. 
Okay, so we have a lot of similar editors or panels, not to be confused with JPanel, in our IDE. So like we have our canvas here, we have our palette, we have our property uh, panel, and we have the component tree, which is like the inspector. So let's go ahead and delete this label. I just put it on here just for looks, get rid of these spacers. It was just as an example. The first thing that we're gonna wanna do is set the title of our JFrame. So I don't have a JFrame, I have a JPanel, but we can give this JPanel a unique name and we can refer to that JPanel by name as a variable in our code and set up a JFrame. So let's call this main panel. And now that I've given this an identifier, it has a variable in my associated Java file. Pretty cool. So like I said, we need a form. In the NetBeans IDE, the GUI builder gives you a JFrame by default. We have to create that JFrame ourselves. So let's have our class Celsius Converter GUI inherit from JFrame. We're going to need a constructor that's going to accept a string representing the name of our app, the name of our frame. This is what's going to show up in the title bar. So for example, what shows up up here. So public Celsius Converter GUI string, app name, or string title, it's up to you. We'll call our superclass, so which is a JFrame constructor, passing in our title. A little bit of boilerplate code that we need to type in here. I'll explain it a little bit, uh, but the purpose is to get through our tutorial here and come back later and read the tutorial, uh, the later trails on the job tutorials and learn about all the details of the code we're about to write here. Uh, so this dot set default close operation. So JFrame exit on close. This dot set content pane. So this is where we're going to set the content that's going to go in our form in our JFrame. And this is why we have a reference to our J panel here so we can make a connection to what we're building in the builder to what's actually going to be instantiated at runtime. And this dot pack. Okay, great. Now our code isn't going to run unless we have a main. So let's go ahead and write out our favorite line of Java code. Okay, so we have a main now. This is the main entry point to our program. We need to instantiate a JFrame. And lucky for us, we have a JFrame class. It's our Celsius Converter GUI. Remember, this inherits from JFrame. And we can pass in the title for our program. So let's do my Celsius Converter. So we've made the JFrame object and now we need to set visible to be true so that we can actually see it. Head up to run, click run. You'll need to make a new configuration for our Celsius converter GUI. Go ahead and click. Uh, this is selecting what file has your main. You can see it's building and it's running. And look at that, we have a little form. Okay, so here is our JFrame and it has a title right here and a J panel here that has no content on it. This is our content pane. Awesome. All right, so let's close that and check in and see where we're at following along with our NetBeans tutorial. Okay, so title, they have Celsius converter. I put my Celsius converter in there just to make it a little more personal. Now we're ready to add a J text field. This is where the user can enter in the degrees in Celsius. So head over to our form builder. We're gonna look in our palette for a J text field. 
here's a J text field. Let's drag it on to our canvas, onto our panel. And like I said earlier, we're not gonna try and make this look pretty. We're just gonna try and get it to work. So you can kind of see where the J text field kind of wants to bind to. Uh, go ahead and drop it somewhere on the left top side. Uh, like I said, we don't care too much where it goes at this point. Uh, so we need to give, well, we don't need to, we'd like to give this text field a uh, field name. This is gonna be the variable name back in our code. So let's call it Celsius text field, enter. If I look over at the Java code, I can see that now I have a J text field, Celsius text field attribute. Awesome. Now I can refer to it in the code. All right, let's add a J label to the right of our J text field. Let's call this Celsius label. We're not actually ever going to refer to the Celsius label in code, but it's still nice to have descriptive variable names. And I'm gonna scroll a little bit down in the property inspector here. And under text, I'm gonna change the label to be Celsius. This is just a label for what the user should be entering into our text field. Okay, next I'm gonna grab a J button. This is gonna be our convert button. Same thing, I'm gonna give it a custom field name so I have a nice variable name in my code. I'll call it convert button. And under text, I'm gonna rename button to convert. So the user knows what happens when they press this button. We're almost done with our layout. We do need one more label over here for Fahrenheit. J label, shove it in this little corner over here. Label Fahrenheit. and Fahrenheit label. Okay, this looks really good. Let's go ahead and run our code and check out what our JFrame looks like now. So here it is. We've got a nice text field where we can enter in some numbers or even some text, it doesn't matter. We've got a convert button that when we press, nothing happens. Let's work on that next. Checking in with the tutorial. Got our J label, our J button, our second J label. Great. We are cruising right along. We're not going to mess with the size because we're using a different layout. We've already changed our default variable names. Aha, this is the spot we want to be at register the event listeners. So when the user clicks on the convert button, we want some code to execute in our Java file that's going to grab the text in the text field, convert it to a double value, convert that double value into its Fahrenheit value, and then update our Fahrenheit label with that Fahrenheit value. All right, so we need to click on our button. We can do that over here in the component tree. Right click, create listener. We want an action listener. This is for when the user clicks on it. Go ahead and click action performed. This is our callback. And this is going to add to our convert button an action listener with one callback action performed. Okay. In action perform, we need to do a few things. Grab the text from the Celsius text field. Convert to a double. And update the Fahrenheit label. So we could type this all out, or we can just copy and paste some code from the tutorial. 
grab this code right here, paste it. We need to update the names of our variables for our J components because they're a little bit different. So temp text field, this is going to be Celsius text field and our Fahrenheit label is me spelling Fahrenheit incorrectly. Okay, great. Let's save it and run it. So I'm gonna enter in 100 degrees Celsius, which we know is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Click convert and look, we've got 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we do have some layout issues here, but for the most part in a minimal working example, we were able to get this job tutorials for net being example, working for IntelliJ idea. So that brings us to the end of the Java tutorials tutorial. Let me know if you have any questions and hopefully it worked for you and you know a little bit more about how to use IntelliJ IDEA and its Swing GUI Builder. Thanks for watching.